Gilfagening, The Beguiling of Gilfi, Section 11. Then said Gangleri, How does he govern the course of the sun or of the moon? Har answered, A certain man was named Mundifari, who had two children. They were so fair and comely that he called his son Moon and his daughter Sun, and wedded her to the man called Glenner. But the gods were incensed at that insolence, and took the brother and sister and set them up in the heavens. They caused Sun to drive those horses that drew the chariot of the sun, which the gods had fashioned for the world's illumination, from that glowing stuff which flew out of Muspelheim. Those horses are called thus, early wake and all strong, and under the shoulders of the horses the gods set two wind-bags to cool them, but in some records that is called iron coolness. Moon steers the course of the moon and determines its waxing and waning. He took from the earth two children called Beel and Hyuki, they that went from the well called Birgir, bearing on their shoulders the cask called Segir and the pole Simu. Their father is named Vinfinner. These children follow moon, as may be seen from the earth. 12. Then said Gangleri, the sun fares swiftly and almost as if she were afraid. She could not hasten her course any the more if she feared her destruction. Then Har made answer, it is no marvel that she hastens furiously. Close cometh he that seeks her, and she has no escape save to run away. Then said Gangleri, who is he that causes her this disquiet? Har replied, it is two wolves, and he that runs after her is called Skul, she fears him, and he shall take her. But he that leaps before her is called Hati Hrodvitnison. He is eager to seize the moon, and so it must be. Then said Gangleri, What is the race of the wolves? Har answered, A witch dwells to the east of Midgard in the forest called Ironwood. In that wood dwell the troll women, who are known as Ironwood women. The old witch bears many giants for sons, and all in the shape of wolves and from this source are these wolves sprung the saying runs thus from this race shall come one that shall be mightiest of all he that is named moonhound he shall be filled with the flesh of all those men that die and he shall swallow the moon and sprinkle with blood the heavens and all the air thereof shall the sun lose her shining and the winds in that day shall be unquiet and roar on every side so it says in voluspa eastward dwells the old one in ironwood and there gives birth to fenrir's brethren there shall spring of them all a certain one the moon's taker in troll's likeness he is filled with flesh of fey men reddens the god's seats with ruddy blood gouts swart becomes sunshine in summers after the weather all shifty wit ye yet or what thirteen then said gangleri what is the way to heaven from earth then Har answered and laughed aloud, Now that is not wisely asked. Has it not been told thee that the gods made a bridge from earth to heaven called Bifrist? Thou must have seen it. It may be that ye call it rainbow. It is of three colors and very strong, and made with cunning and with more magic art than other works of craftsmanship. But strong as it is, yet must it be broken, when the sons of Muspel should go forth, harrying and ride it and swim their horses over great rivers thus they shall proceed then said gangleri to my thinking the gods did not build the bridge honestly seeing that it could be broken and they able to make it as they would then har replied the gods are not deserving of reproof because of this work of skill a good bridge is bifrost but nothing in this world is of such nature that it may be relied on when the sons of muspel go a harrying fourteen then said gangleri what did allfather then do when asgard was made har answered in the beginning he established rulers and bade them ordain fates with him and give counsel concerning the planning of the town that was in the place which is called idafield in the midst of the town it was their first work to make that court in which their twelve seats stand and another the high seat which allfather himself has that house is the best made of any on earth and the greatest without and within it is all like one piece of gold men call it gladsheim they made also a second hall that was a shrine which the goddesses had and it was a very fair house men called it vingolf next they fashioned a house wherein they placed a forge 
and made besides a hammer, tongs, and anvil, and by means of these all other tools. After this they smithied metal and stone and wood, and wrought so abundantly that metal which is called gold, that they had all their household ware and all dishes of gold. And that time is called the age of gold, before it was spoiled by the coming of the women, even those who came out of Jutenheim. Next after this the gods enthroned themselves in their seats and held judgment and called to mind whence the dwarves had quickened in the mould and underneath in the earth even as do maggots in flesh the dwarves had first received shape and life in the flesh of ymir and were then maggots but by decree of the gods had become conscious with the intelligence of men and had human shape and nevertheless they dwell in the earth and in stones Modsugnir was the first and durin the second so it says in voluspa then strode all the mighty to the seats of judgment, the gods most holy, and together held counsel. Who should of dwarves shape the peoples from the bloody surge in the blue one's bones? They made many in man's likeness, dwarves in the earth, as Durin said. And these, says the Sibyl, are their names. Ni and Nidi, Nordri and Sudri, Austri, Vestri, Altufer, Dvalin, Nar, Nain, Nipinger, Dain, Bifer, Bafer, Bomber, Nori, Ori, Onar, Oin, Mjodvitnir, Vigar and Gandalfir, Vidalfir, Thorin, Fili, Kili, Fundin, Vali, Thror, Throin, Fekker, Liter and Viter, Nir, Nirader, Reker, Radsvider. And these also are dwarves and dwell in stones, but the first in mould. Draupnir, Dogvari, Pur, Hugstari, Pledjulfer, Gloin, Dori, Ori, Dufer, Anvari, Heptifili, Har, Sviar, and these proceed from Svarin's Hauger to Aurvangar on Europlain, and thence is Lovar come. These are their names Skirfir, Virfir, Skafider, Ai, Alfir, Ingvi, Aikinsjaldi, Faler, Frosti, Fider, Ginar. 15. Then said Gangleri, Where is the chief abode or holy place of the gods? Har answered, That is at the ash of Yggdrasil. There the gods must give judgment every day. Then Gangleri asked, What is to be said concerning that place? Then said Jafnhar, The ash is greatest of all trees and best. Its limbs spread out over all the world and stand above heaven. Three roots of the tree uphold it and stand exceeding broad one is among the aesir another among the rime giants in that place where aforetime was the yawning void the third stands over niflheim and under that root is fergelmir and nidhogr gnaws the root from below but under that root which turns toward the rime giants is mimir's well wherein wisdom and understanding are stored and he is called mimir who keeps the well he is full of ancient lore since he drinks of the well from the galarhorn thither came allfather and craved one drink of the well but he got it not until he had laid his eye in pledge so says voluspa all know i odin where the eye thou hiddest in the wide renowned well of mimir mimir drinks mead every morning from valfather's wage wit ye yet or what the third root of the ash stands in heaven and under that root is the well which is very holy that is called the well of urdur there the gods hold their tribunal. Each day the Aesir ride thither up over Bifrust, which is also called the Aesir's Bridge. These are the names of the Aesir's steeds. Sleipnir is best, which Odin has. He has eight feet. The second is Gladr, the third Gilir, the fourth Glenr, the fifth Skeldbrimir, the sixth Silfrentopper, the seventh Sinir, the eighth Gisel, the ninth Falhufnir, the tenth Gultopper, the eleventh let feti baldur's horse was burnt with him and thor walks to the judgment and wades those rivers which are called thus kormt and ormt and the kerlaugs twain them shall thor wade every day when he goes to doom at ash yggdriso for the aesir's bridge burns all with flame and the holy waters howl then said gangleri does fire burn over bifrost har replied that which thou seest to be red in the bow is burning fire the hill giants might go up to heaven if passage on bifrus were open to all those who would cross there are many fair places in heaven and over everything there 
a godlike watch is kept a hall stands there fair under the ash by the well and out of that hall come three maids who are called thus urdur verdandi skuld these maids determine the period of men's lives we call them norns but there are many norns those who come to each child that is born to appoint his life these are of the race of the gods but the second are of the elf people and the third are of the kindred of the dwarves as it is said here most sundered in birth i say the norns are they claim no common kin some are of Isir kin some are of elf kind some are dvalin's daughters then said gangleri if the norns determine the weirds of men then they apportion exceeding unevenly seeing that some have a pleasant and luxurious life but others have little worldly goods or fame some have long life others short har said good norns and of honourable race appoint good life but those men that suffer evil fortunes are governed by evil norns sixteen then said gangleri what more mighty wonders are to be told of the ash har replied much is to be told of it an eagle sits in the limbs of the ash and he has understanding of many a thing and between his eyes sits the hawk that is called vedderfulnir the squirrel called ratatusker runs up and down the length of the ash bearing envious words between the eagle and nidhugger and four hearts run in the limbs of the ash and bite the leaves they are called thus dain dvalin duner durathror moreover so many serpents are in fair gelmir with nidhugger that no tongue can tell them as is here said ash yggdrasil suffers anguish more than men know of the stag bites above on the side it rotteth and nidhugger gnaws from below and it is further said more serpents lie under yggdrasil's stock than every unwise ape can think goin and moin grafvitnir's sons grabakr and grafuldr ofnir and svafnir i think shall a tear the trunks twigs it is further said that these norns who dwell by the well of urdur take water of the well every day and with it that clay which lies about the well and sprinkle it over the ash to the end that its limbs shall not wither nor rot for that water is so holy that all things which come there into the well become as white as the film which lies within the eggshell as is here said i know an ash standing called yggdrasil a high tree sprinkled with snow-white clay thence come the dews in the dale that fall it stands ever green above urdur's well that dew which falls from it onto the earth is called by men honey-dew and thereon are bees nourished two fowls are fed in urdur's well they are called swans and from those fowls has come the race of birds which is so called seventeen then said gangleri thou knowest many tidings to tell of the heaven what chief abodes are there more than at urdur's well har said many places are there and glorious that which is called alfheimer is one where dwell the peoples called light elves but the dark elves dwell down in the earth and they are unlike in appearance but by far more unlike in nature the light elves are fairer to look upon than the sun but the dark elves are blacker than pitch then there is also in that place the abode called breidablik and there is not in heaven a fairer dwelling there too is one called glitnir whose walls and all its posts and pillars are of red gold but its roof of silver there is also the abode called himimbjorg it stands at heaven's end by the bridgehead in the place where bifrus joins heaven another great abode is there which is named Valaskyoth. odin possesses that dwelling the gods made it and thatched it with sheer silver and in this hall is the hlidskjalf the high seat so called whenever allfather sits in that seat he surveys all lands at the southern end of heaven is that hall which is fairest of all and brighter than the sun it is called gimle it shall stand when both heaven and earth have departed and good men and of righteous conversation shall dwell therein so it is said in voluspa a hall i know standing than the sun fairer thatched with gold and gimle bright there shall dwell the doers of righteousness and ever and ever enjoy delight then said gangleri what shall guard this place when the flame of surtur shall consume heaven and earth har answered it is said that another heaven is to the southward and upward of this one and it is called anlanger 
but the third heaven is yet above that, and it is called Vidblain, and in that heaven we think this abode is. But we believe that none but light elves inhabit these mansions now. 18. Then said Gangleri, whence comes the wind? It is strong, so that it stirs great seas, and it swells fire. But strong as it is, none may see it, for it is wonderfully shapen. Then said Har, that I am well able to tell thee. At the northward end of heaven sits a giant called Hresvelger. He has the plumes of an eagle, and when he stretches his wings for flight, then the wind rises from under his wings, as is here said. Hresvelger hight he, who sits at heaven's ending, giant in eagle's coat. From his wings, they say, the wind cometh all menfolk over. 19. Then said Gangleri, why is there so much difference that summer should be hot but winter cold? Har answered, a wise man would not ask thus, seeing that all are able to tell this. But if thou alone art become so slight of understanding as not to have heard it, then I will yet permit that thou shouldst rather ask foolishly once than that thou shouldst be kept longer in ignorance of a thing which it is proper to know. He is called Svasudr, who is father of summer, and he is of pleasant nature, so that from his name whatsoever is pleasant is called sweet. But the father of winter is variously called Vindulyoni or Vindsvalar. He is the son of Vasadr, and these were kinsmen grim and chilly-breasted, and winter has their temper. 20. Then said Gangleri, who are the Aesir, they in whom it behooves men to believe? Har answered, the divine Aesir are twelve. Then said Jafnhar, not less holy are the Asinjur, the goddesses, and they are of no less authority. Then said Thridi, Odin is highest and eldest of the Aesir, he rules all things, and mighty as are the other gods, they all serve him as children obey a father. Frigg is his wife, and she knows all the fates of men, though she speaks no prophecy. As is said here, when Odin himself spake with him of the Aesir, whom men call Loki, Thou art mad now, Loki, and reft of mind. Why, Loki, leavest thou not off? Frigg, methinks, is wise in all fates, though herself say them not. Odin is called Allfather because he is father of all the gods. He is also called father of the slain, because all those that fall in battle are the sons of his adoption. For them he appoints Valhalla and Vingolf, and they are then called champions. He is also called God of the Hanged, God of Gods, God of Cargoes, and he has also been named in many more ways, after he had come to King Geiruder. We were called Grimmer and Gangleri, Herion, Helmberi, Thekker, Thridi, Thuder, Uder, Helblindi, Har, Sadr, Svipal, San Gital, Ertaiter, Hnikar, Biliger, Baleger, Bolverke, Fjulner, Grimnir, Glapsvider, Fjulsvider, Sidhuter, Sidskeger, Sigfuder, Nikuder, Alfuder, Atrider, Falmatir, Oski, Omi, Jafenhar, Biflindi, Gundlir, Arbader, Svidur, Svidrir, Yelker, Kjalar, Vidur, Thror, Eger, Thunder, Bakr, Skilfinger, Bafuder, Proptatir, Gautir, Feratir. Then said Gangleri, exceeding many names have ye given him and by my faith it must indeed be a goodly wit that knows all the lore and the examples of what chances have brought about each of these names then har made answer it is truly a vast sum of knowledge to gather together and set forth fittingly but it is briefest to tell thee that most of his names have been given him by reason of this chance there being so many branches of tongues in the world all peoples believed that it was needful for them to turn his name into their own tongue by which they might the better invoke him and entreat him on their own behalf but some occasions for these names arose in his wanderings and that matter is recorded in tales nor canst thou ever be called a wise man if thou shalt not be able to tell of those great events end of sections eleven through twenty of gilfagening the beguiling of gilfi recording by expatriate in bangor maine